Hi friends, welcome back. So we are watching an amazing video and it says how do musical pillars work? Rock melting technology, cymatics. So this is totally a new thing for us, at least for me. And I'm really excited to watch and get to know what exactly is this video on. Do we have some kind of musical pillars or that which means pillars that create music? That would be amazing and fantastic and unbelievable. So friends, really excited to watch this. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and say that if you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell icon if you haven't done so. And after watching the video, if you like it, make sure to click the like button and share this video with your friends and family. That was quick, wasn't it? So let's go ahead and watch this video. Hey guys, I'm at the Vitala Temple in Hampi. I'm going to show you the mystery of the musical pillars. This structure called the musical hall is now closed for renovation. However, I managed to get the actual sounds from these pillars. Here's a pillar which shows a man playing ancient drums. Now, if you tap this, you will hear the sound of these drums. Now, here's the sound of a temple bell. And here is a sound similar to a school bell. Now, you can combine these various sounds to create even modern sounds. For example, this is the combination of the temple bell and the school bell to create the modern day doorbell. How do these different pillars create various sounds? But this is nothing when you take this pillar that's made of one stone and has small columns carved onto it. If you tap on each of these small columns they create the seven notes of the musical scale in Indian classical music, which is similar to Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti in Western world. This is what it sounds like. What kind of stone technology existed in ancient India that could mimic the sounds of musical instruments. We can see many, many different sounds of advanced instruments like Jaltarang, which uses water waves. Gatam, which uses terracotta pots. And even sounds of string instruments are created on these pillars. How do these pillars made of the same material, which is granite, create these various sounds? Is it possible that the ancient builders somehow created holes inside these pillars? Because the only way to make different sounds from the same material is to alter its density. So, do these pillars have holes inside them to enable them to create various sounds. The British had the same question in mind and they not only took a huge pillar but also cut one of the small columns to see what was inside. Here you can see the column that is missing. This was cut by the British Whoa. during pre-independence in 1930s and they were surprised to find that all these pillars and columns are just made of solid rock. So, if there are no holes inside these pillars, how do you make them create different sounds? If they alter the dimensions like height, width, and diameter, you could at least make them sound a little bit different. But if you look closely, all the columns have the same height, width, and diameter, yet they create the seven different notes of the Indian musical scale. If they're all of the same dimensions, same material, 
and don't have holes inside, how do they create different musical sounds? The only way this could be achieved is by changing the intrinsic density of the pillars by adding a new material to it in different proportions like modern day alloys. Today, we melt various metals and add them in different ratios to create the desired effect. However, did ancient builders melt solid blocks of granite and mix it with other materials to create different sounds? Locals argue that the musical pillars were created using rock melting technology. As evidence, they say that chains made of rocks were hooked to these corners on the ceiling. Now, this would be impossible without melting the rocks. These rock chains were later destroyed during foreign invasion, just like the Temple Tower. A chain made of solid rock. Is something like that even possible? Why do these corners have empty hooks? Based on a tip, I traveled to Kanchipuram, which is 300 miles from Humpy. And here, we can see the chains mm -hmm. hanging from the hooks on the corners of the ceiling. Yes, these chains with many links are in fact made of stone. Archaeologists have confirmed that these are made of stone and were created at least 700 years ago. How could anyone create these stone chains with primitive tools? Even today, such a technology is not possible with modern machines. What kind of machines were used in ancient times and how were they able to create these chains made of rock? But this is not even the main problem. The problem is that while the stone chains are made of sandstone, the ceiling is made of granite blocks. So how could they connect two different types of rocks at this junction? We know for a fact that this is impossible without melting the rocks. There is no way to connect two different materials using links unless one of them is melted. So these rock chains prove that the ancient builders did in fact melt the rocks and changed its density like modern day alloys. Now let's go back to the musical pillars of Humpy. We can be sure that the rock chains were once hanging from the ceiling of the musical hall. Otherwise there's no need for these hooks. Now, to create musical pillars, we not only require rock melting technology, but also enormous understanding of sounds. Mm -hmm. Did ancient builders have a much deeper understanding of sound, just like modern day scientists? Today, we use a technology called cymatics to understand sound and vibration. When struck with different musical notes and vibrations, different geometric patterns emerge. Is it possible that ancient builders were also using cymatics? And more importantly, are these patterns carved in the Temple of Humpy? Here you can see cymatic patterns carved on the ceiling of the Humpy Temple. These carvings clearly resemble the patterns similar to the musical notes. Each musical note creates a certain pattern and the ceiling of the musical hall is full of varying patterns. Even better, these carvings show sound in three dimension and today we can create 3D cymatic patterns of the same sounds using holograph technology. Is it a coincidence that these cymatic patterns are carved all over the ceiling of the musical hall? Why else did the ancient builders take enormous pains to create these varying patterns on the ceiling? Now what's more interesting is that the musical hall is closed because people have damaged it by tapping the pillars with keys and coins while in ancient times, musicians 
exclusively used sandalwood sticks to tap on these pillars. And if you look at this cymatics pattern closely, we see exactly what is going on. The women are standing in a circle, tapping with sticks, and the sound they create is visually depicted in the center. Now, let's go into the main chamber of the temple to see if we can find more evidence. This place is completely dark and infested with bats, mm -hmm. but it once housed the idol of Vitala, the main god of the temple. The idol is gone now, but on the ceiling you can see a very large cymatics pattern. What is the need for carving such an elaborate pattern on top of the idol in a dark chamber? So what do you think? How do these pillars create music? Did ancient builders use rock melting technology to alter the nature of the rocks? How else can we explain these rock chains made of sandstone linked to the granite hooks? How is this link possible without rock melting technology? How could one rock with columns of same dimensions produce seven different nodes? Why are these various patterns of cymatics carved on the ceiling of the musical hall? So friends, this was amazing. I didn't even know about musical pillars, but looking at what information he was giving, it was mind blowing and it was really very advanced technology, which even I am not aware of. I mean, of course, we are just common people and haven't read about these. But I mean, if at that time we had such advancement, amazing, amazing, amazing. And I'm so glad that I watched this video because this is showing how advanced our civilization was. What's now coming into my mind at this point is if we were so advanced, what happened? What happened that we were pushed back so badly and we are so back now from the rest of the world? Because at this point, when I look at this video, it looks like we were far ahead of the rest of the world at that time. And the technology that is now being used was used at that time. And it says that it was like 700 years old. So I, I don't know. I mean, and most of these ideas and concepts that he was talking about and the notes that they have, you know, the drawings of those. Oh, my God. I never, ever heard, had heard about it or knew about it. So I am amazed. I'm spellbounded. Right. So very good video. And I think... Uh... Uh, he was trying to portray the fact that uh, how did this complicated technology come to be, right? How did it, how is it there and how come it's so mysterious? In the sense, it is mysterious, but it's out of the ordinary. And there are many theories. I mean, first, obviously, it goes to the fact that uh, if you look at the pillars, the height is the same and the width is diameter is the same. So height is same, diameter is same, but they make different sounds. So first theory was maybe, you know, there was a hole somewhere, but he, they did not find any holes. Or the only explanation was that the material itself was different. So in the sense that initially they made with the same material, but then they coated it with a different material to change the sound. And to do that, they obviously knew how to melt rock. So they were able to melt rock and vary the composition of the rock by melting different things in it and then building the chain. Even the question was chain was, okay, to look at the chain, somebody has to melt it, right? Somebody has to melt it and when it comes out, it is a full circle. Then you put it in a different way and then you make a path and you pour something in it and then you create a link. So the link has to be created step by step. After one is ready, then the next link, the next link, and they have to melt it so that when it cools off it is together so melting technology of rock then the question came that the material of the sandstone versus granite i think he said mm. those materials are different so uh, combining two different material types again would need melting so that means they were so sophisticated that they could melt and create this and then he came to the sound thing that the sound was a mystery and of course he started with the sound in the sense that the material has to be different 
right then he came to the semantics where he is saying that now these every sound creates a pattern and these people knew about the pattern mm. because you can look at the drawings so then he went to that that, that these people had a very good understanding of the pattern of sound every when he showed different different this is sound pattern here is a sound pattern this is a different sound look at the sound pattern then he goes down to the dark place with an idol and they're saying idol is gone now mm -hmm. so maybe destroyed or something we don't know why the idol is gone and above that there's a different sound right so now the pattern of the sound that is today is same as what they had i mean 700 years ago they knew it now that everybody when they see this video the first question this uh, knowledge everybody questions that where are these people how come these people were so sophisticated and they did not uh, give this knowledge to their children and how come their children did not give to their children and how come from that point on more sophisticated things would have been created but now somewhere some reset occurred right i mean reset in the sense things were not destroyed things are there but the reset in the knowledge took place and then people had to start from scratch 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 and we have come till here so this will always be a question mark many people have said that maybe that these people were aliens in the sense that these people were travelers they could travel to different planets some aliens that we say is nothing but an entity that came from a different planet came here built a bunch of stuff for the local people who were still not advanced at the time so one theory is that aliens came aliens made it up and made all this stuff and they went away and they did this to help out the common people and the common people still have now are figuring out what's going on so that is one theory the other theory is that whoever made this they somehow could not give the knowledge to their children and nobody knows why so definitely and then if you if if there was and the same theory people have also applied to the pyramids saying that they, the rocks were so heavy how can somebody lift a rock and take it till the top then the mummification where they have preserved mm -hmm. the bodies for so long so there are so many mysteries in the uh, egyptian pyramids and they also believe that aliens came they did something they went and different different aliens came at different time they put their stuff and they looked at the humanity and say humanity is too primitive so they made their stuff and they went and humanity could use it and today we are wondering who came and there's also so these kind of theories have been around but the beauty is that to that finally we have been able to understand this is great i mean we have been able to understand that that pattern that was drawn is actually a sound pattern and then he showed the hologram where he said now we can show in hologram what's going on but it will always remain a mystery that some superior intelligent entity did exist 700 years ago same question then we go back to when we go back to dwarika dwarika i think was 9000 years ago mm. right i think 9000 years ago so the question was uh, that means if you go even further you will see there were very very superior beings and that is what we are talking about the time of the gods right we are talking about uh, at the time of lord krishna where they had the ability to build dwarika it went down 9000 years ago so at that time they were that means even more advanced maybe some people will and there is again a theory behind everything some and these are all conspiracy theories there somebody is just thinking about it maybe and maybe the point was that some aliens used to live over here the aliens used to live then the aliens left and went and then some other aliens come so so during the time different different people have come from outside there so this is one theory the other theory of as i said you know uh, that at some point the knowledge was reset nobody knows why and we are but uh, what i feel is good is that okay finally we have been able to understand what all this is about yeah but what was sad was that such an uh, we have such an amazing thing there yeah. and it's in such a bad condition but i'm glad that they are trying to restore it but this is out of the world it should be like you know highlighted to show how much advanced we were i mean so many yeah. years back and this should be some 
a tourist spot and really preserved well because guys here when we go to like even caves they've strongly said don't touch them i mean as if they are you know something very precious they don't want you to touch them because a little bit of sweat oil oil yeah a little bit of oil when you touch it can damage it over the years so they they really take a lot of precautions and they've written it down they don't make let anyone touch it they're very strict about it so with what we have in india we should be really very very strict about it because as they said that this got destroyed because people had been you know uh, using coins and other Easy. stuff yeah sticks and stuff to listen to those songs and that has damaged it over the years so i'm hoping that they are able to restore it and bring it back to a really good condition and then they have strict rules as to what to do and the people you know who are there to guide the tourists who are coming and let show them or something should be done and this is a really fascinating video and i'm so proud and i'm just simply amazed watching right. this so video. that is exactly i mean if somebody is hitting with their keys or doing it that's what it shows how can we be so primitive compared to this that means there was some intelligent uh, entity that created this and now if now we are not able to create this and we are banging on it like you know primitive so that's what and that's what people say that somebody very technology advanced used to be here we don't know what happened and then now we are catching up slowly and trying to yeah. come to that uh, stage and, and and there was another article where we saw that between the india and china border there's yeah. a place where where ufos have been seen they so, think that it is but then they said that through some pictures they think it's probably a military, military base, base. Yeah, so, so we no, don't no, know but yeah, there so, is something yeah. you know something yeah. to think so about so they think there's a military base where uh, india and china are cooperating and they know exactly what's going on so there is something and a similar way i think in the us also we have area yeah which they say no people are not allowed it's out yeah. of bounds and they yeah. think probably you know alien yeah. ships probably have landed and the government is not letting us know yeah. about it yeah but, but so. the guy who is the hacker i think john snowden or something mm. um he did say that i have searched to all that there is nothing in there so he, because know. he was a hacker and he could hack into uh, military databases and he said i could not find anything but we never UFO. know we never know yeah, because so there are so many yeah. things just like this you know yeah. this uh, temple that we have so guys amazing so this is something to think about and <laughs> like what happened how was this possible and all those questions they come into one's mind so guys we hope you enjoyed this video i really enjoyed it i mean i didn't know this was what it was and this was fantastic so guys we'll take your leave and we'll come back again in another video very soon till then take care and bye bye oh and if you're new to my channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so it notifies you when i put in my new video for you to enjoy bye